Pelican Zion Williamson, left hamstring, is out for Friday's planned tournament elimination game versus Sacramento and will be evaluated again in coming weeks. Zion has suffered yet again another injury and it happened at the worst time possible in his technically first postseason game ever. After dropping 40 points on the Lakers in front of national TV and completely taking over the game and leading a comeback, Zion was furious when he had to pull himself out of the game to go to the locker room with 3 minutes left. I'm pretty sure everyone knew that if Zion played the rest of that game, the Pelicans would have won because the Lakers couldn't do anything to stop Zion. But that's the thing, if Zion played, if Zion didn't get injured, if Zion was healthy, since the 2019 season, Zion's rookie year, Zion has been up there in the leaderboards for most missed games due to injury. However, he just had the healthiest year in his NBA career playing 70 games. And that directly reflected the Pelicans this season, having the second best record in franchise history, as well as being the fifth seed for the majority of the season in the Western Conference that is stacked with good teams. Zion this season has faced so much adversity and actually overcame it, taking better care of his body, becoming a significantly better defender, becoming a better playmaker, and probably the biggest thing, finding new ways to score. But this generational player who we see taking giant leaps in his game cannot seem to escape those injuries. After having his undisputed best season and after dropping a 40 bomb in his first postseason game his body couldn't keep up anymore but even though the season did end on a bad note there's so many improvements and positives to take out of the season that you just can't help but look forward to zion's future this last game where he dropped 40 points against the lakers is merely just a glimpse of what zion is actually capable of Last year, the Pelicans had a very unfortunate season, a season that was riddled with injuries. Zion missed 45 games, Ingram missed 29 games, and CJ McCollum was playing with a nagging thumb injury for the majority of the season. In total, the Pelicans quote unquote big three only played 10 games together in 2022. Despite this, the Pels still ended the season 42 and 40 and barely made the playing tournament with the 9th seed, where they would be facing the 10th seed OKC Thunder. The biggest game of the season, win or go home. By the time this game came around, Zion had recovered from his injury and was clear to play, but he decided not to, stating that physically I'm fine, now it's just a matter of when I feel like Zion. Physically I'm fine, now it's just a matter of uh, like when I feel like Zion. And so, Zion sat on the sidelines as the Pelicans fell 5 points short to the Thunder and promptly ended the season. Now, you probably aren't surprised to know that this caused a lot of outrage, especially from the Pelicans fan base. But let's take a step back. What exactly did he mean by not feeling like Zion? Well, Zion himself said that essentially he was just scared of getting injured again. For some context, Zion's injury was only a hamstring strain that wasn't supposed to end the season. But after finally starting to get back on the court, he re-injured it, knocking him out for the rest of the regular season. Would you rather rush your recovery to play one game after not playing for months to potentially play the number one seeded Nuggets or sit out and play the next season fully healthy? Zion chose the latter. Unfortunately, Zion didn't start the 2023 to 2024 season right. If you were in tune, Zion got absolutely clowned on for his weight. Simply put, the man was fat. Zion faced a lot of backlash, backlash that continued to pile up until it reached its peak in the semi-final of the in-season tournament. Pelicans vs Lakers, all eyes were on his game. LeBron James vs Zion Williamson. In all honesty, I was really excited for this game. It was an opportunity for Zion and the Pelicans to prove themselves. But instead, the Pelicans got cooked, losing by over 40 points. Zion especially laid an egg in front of everyone. He got ridiculed by the media for being overweight, for his lack of aggression, and because of his mentality. Now, when faced with adversity, you can either crumble and succumb to the pressure, or you can use it to come back stronger than ever. I gotta be better. I gotta be more aggressive, finding my shot. Uh, I gotta do more things, get my team going. Uh, I think I was too laid back tonight, and I uh, just I can't do that. And defensively, I gotta be better. After this game, it was kind of like a switch just flipped. From this point on, Zion would only get better, way better, offensively and defensively. Not long after this game, the rise of point Zion began. Previously, the Pels really just dumped the ball to Zion in the paint and let him go to work. Now. The Pelicans started to give Zion more of a point guard role. Most of the time, he starts with the ball in his hands. Since he has so much gravity and garners so much attention in the paint, 
He creates a lot of good looks for his teammates. Now, if you surround Zion, one of the best paint scorers in the league, with shooters, now it's not so easy to defend both Zion and the three-point shooters at the same time. However, if either Zion or the three-point shooting isn't working, then there's a problem. For the majority of his NBA career, Zion has only relied on his layup, which is all he really needed to get past most defenses. But these final months of the season, we've seen Zion actually add more to his bag. He's been creating more space for himself by incorporating different types of shots and also shooting in other areas besides just a restricted area. Take a look at Zion's shot area percentages this season and compare it with the 2020 season really his only other healthy season in the NBA. In the 2023 season, Zion attempted a total of 1,094 field goals. 66% of those were in the restricted area. 31% were in the paint, not including the restricted area. Now compare that to his 2020 season, where he had 1,037 field goal attempts. 79% of those were in the restricted area. And only 16% was in the paint outside of the restricted area. This 2023 season, Zion has begun to expand his game. He doesn't just solely rely on brute forcing his way to that rim as much as before, which is isn't just good for his offense, it's also very good for his health and longevity. Like I said earlier, Zion late in the 2023 season has taken more of a point guard role, which obviously means he's had to become a better playmaker, and he definitely has. Zion has quickly adapted and he reads the floor very well. He often leaves a lot of his teammates wide open for three because he garners so much attention, which is why Zion is averaging a career high five assists a game. It really isn't all that surprising that the most success the Pelicans have had this season is when they surround Zion with sharp shooters. These three-point shooters open up in space of floor, which then in turn makes it easier for Zion to go to work in the paint. Offensively, Zion has taken a massive step forward. However, one thing that definitely is not talked about enough is this man's defense. Zion has never been known for his defense. You almost never actually see him try on defense. And like Zion has said, sometimes he just didn't know what he was doing. This is perfectly showcased by his defense in the in-season tournament against the Lakers. Zion was just jogging, not really rotating at all. Of course, a lot of that was because Zion's conditioning at the time was very bad. He was overweight and wasn't as aggressive as a result. But after that loss, Zion has said that he got tired of being the pigeon. He got tired of being hunted by opposing offenses. Basically, he got tired of being the worst defender in the team. As the season went on and Zion got healthier, his defense also tremendously improved. Zion actually began sliding his feet and trying to keep up with the person he's guarding, which has often led to steals. He's also started using his insane athleticism to make some crazy blocks. On April 7th, 2024 against the Suns, Zion had a career high in blocks with 5. And just 5 days later against the Warriors, Zion had a career high in steals with 6. Zion's defense has progressed upwards every single week, all the way up until his final game of the season. Just look at Zion's defense on LeBron here. And yeah, I know LeBron is 39, but still. Still, Zion completely shut down LeBron. A couple months ago, it was the exact opposite. Now, while we're on the topic of this planned game against the Lakers, I want to dive a bit more into it. Just two days before the planned game against the Lakers, the Pels actually faced them again in the regular season finale. If the Pelicans won, they would clinch the 6th seed. The Lakers were also fighting to keep the 8th seed. The entire season really depended on this game. Were the Pelicans finally going to clinch a playoff series? Or were they going to have to be in the planes for a third time? Yeah, this game was big for everyone, but it was way more important for Zion. He had been in this situation before, under the bright lights against the Lakers. Zion had a chance at redeeming himself, but unfortunately, he didn't come through. Making only 4 of his 13 shots, turning the ball over 4 times, and only making 12 points. But as bad as the stats make it seem, it really wasn't like Zion couldn't do anything. Zion had some good looks at the rim, but he just missed some really easy shots. He also attempted his jump shot three times and missed them all. Like I said, Zion has been incorporating a jump shot. It looks good, but he needs to work on it some more so he could get it to fall more consistently. Zion also just had some careless turnovers, bad passes, getting the ball poked out too much and some other stuff. Even though Zion did have a bad game, he still had 8 assists and 8 rebounds. But this performance still isn't excusable from your superstar. You're not going to win games like this when your star is off. The Pelicans did fall 124 to 108 and fell to the seventh seed, but Zion still had one more chance to prove himself. In the playing game versus the exact same team just two days later. And I think Zion knew that the outcome of this game was going to be decided by him and him only. 
Zion undoubtedly had his best game of not just his NBA career, but his basketball career as a whole. He went 17 of 27 from the field and dropped a whopping 40 points. And it wasn't just on offense. Nah, Zion was a threat on both sides of the ball. And as the game went on, Zion became more and more unstoppable. He was a perfect 4 of 4 from the field in the fourth quarter before his body gave up on him with 3 minutes left in the game. There is no doubt in my mind that if Zion finished that game, the Pelicans were going to win. I think everybody felt the same way. Instead of crumbling under the pressure of all the adversity he faced this year, Zion overcame it all, came out a better player, and proved everyone wrong. In a game where 3 of your starters went 4 of 12, 1 of 7, and 4 of 15, Zion almost single-handedly carved the Pelicans out from being down 18 in the middle of the third quarter. The Pelicans just barely lost the game, 110 to 106. Now, even though Zion and the Pelican season is over, there's still a lot to look forward to. Zion just had his healthiest season of his career, 70 games played. It's obvious that Zion is prioritizing his health and is doing things to prevent injury, whether it's training and working out or tailoring his game to have a less demanding but more efficient playstyle. Zion's final game showed us a glimpse of just how great he can be. Let's just hope injuries don't derail Zion from being the generational player we all know he is.